2020 was brutal, and 2021 wasn't a whole lot better, but I did manage to learn a few pretty big life lessons in the first three months, and I'm going to share all seven of them with you today. Personally, I think number seven will be the one that resonates most with you guys. It was definitely that one for me, and it was the most recent one I learned too. Number one, don't believe it until you see it, or don't believe it until you have it in your hand. This one was entrepreneurial in nature for me, but it definitely applies to relationships as well. A lot of people that you deal with in business or people that you date early on in the stages, they can be all talk. They can sell you on a good product, but not deliver. In my case, I was under, I was overpromised and underdelivered. Basically, I was lied to, which is a pretty big slap in the face because prior to agreeing to work with them and pay them and give them my money, <laughs> I had meetings with them and I had asked them, can you guys do X? Does your thing allow me to do Y? Does the functionality of your product, does it allow for this? And they said yes to each of those individual questions. They were affirming to me that their product was everything that I needed. I said, great, we agreed to work together. We started the month long onboarding training process. And at this point I had moved from talking to that onboarding specialist who was basically selling me on the product and transitioned to working with the training specialist who was going to take me through that month long training process, which I paid for. I paid for the month long training as well as their like service product for the month of February. Anyways, Less than two weeks in, I was talking to my training specialist and I said, hey, I'm trying to do this thing. Uh, it's not letting me, can you look into it? And he replies with, yeah, no, we can't do that. Turns out all of the answers to the things that I was inquiring about were fake. I couldn't believe it. I had been played. I had been duped. I had been had. I can't even do a sad face. That's <laughs> this is like my, my resting face. Okay, I'll try again. I feel like that looks pretty sad, but I had been sold on a product that didn't exist and it sucked. And I've experienced this with relationships too. People will tell you whatever they think you want to hear because they want something from you. And it's not always with malicious intent. Like a lot of the times they don't know that they're doing it. Myself even. I've had times where I've said, I'm ready. I'm ready to commit. I want to commit. I'm ready to be that person for you. I wasn't aware that I needed more time to grow, more time to learn before I could let someone enter my life as a partner. But, oh my God, my stomach, do you hear that? <laughs> be wary of the signs. When you see those little red flags, pause and think to yourself, is this really what I want? Or is this gonna play out exactly how I would expect a situation with red flags to go? Number two, wait as long as you can to tell people what you're working on and don't give firm release dates. So back in January, I was working on a project that I had planned to release March 1st. The same project that had been sold to me on lies and deception. And I had already started telling people, hey guys, I'm working on this thing. Keep an eye out for March 1st. Get excited. You're, you're gonna see this cool new thing that I'm working on. It's fun, blah, blah, blah. Then less than two weeks in, I find out that I've been lied to and the project was halted. I'm going back and forth with the company. No solution has been found. Launch date passes and I have no idea if I'm gonna be working with this company, if I'm gonna release any product at all. Do I forgive them and try to find some workaround solution or do I just restart completely with another company or do I invest more of my own money and do this like from the ground up all for me I really didn't know what I was gonna do for like a month and a half I was just kind of frozen like all right well what do I do now and in life I try really hard not to regret things but honestly I part of me does regret regret <laughs> part of me does regret telling people about my project I don't want people to see that I messed up part of me wishes that I never told them so I could save myself from the embarrassment but at the end of the day, no one really cares. So <laughs> I really didn't have a problem. I was just, it was me, right? Like I cared. So it was, it was all within me to fix it, to find a solution, to start again and, and work at it. But there's also the idea of putting things out into the universe, announcing what you're planning to do to your friends, to your families, your peers, the idea that you got to speak your goals into existence. And I like this concept a lot. I practice it often and I believe in it but now I know to be a little more mindful of exactly what I'm saying to these people. I would say wait until you're at least 80% certain that this thing is happening and specifically it's happening the way you want it to. Be a little more vague with the details that you tell people, especially when a large portion of the end result is not within your direct control. Number three, now we're getting to the really deep stuff. This one really opened up my eyes as to why people say the things they say and do the things they do to others. Hurt people hurt people. 
The more I thought about this concept, the more I realized that everybody is hurting. You could be hurting from past relationships, experiences with your parents, or maybe you're just lost and confused. If something hurts you and you don't know how to deal with that pain, or you're not able to recognize where it's coming from, you'll likely hurt other people. And it comes in many different forms. Your previous relationship left you with some scars and now your current partner has to deal with those. You agree to be committed to someone but deep down you know that you're scared and that it'll blow up some point down the road. Or you break up with someone because you need time and space to heal from your own pain and you shouldn't have gotten into the relationship in the first place. And most times, people don't do this consciously. They don't know that they're hurting other people. It's really hard to recognize the pain you're going through and how it's affecting other people and even harder to understand it. Another example is in parenting. Your parents get divorced, you unconsciously develop a fear of being alone, you date someone to cover up that fear that you feel, and now you subject your partner to imprisonment of the relationship and you terrorize them for giving you too much space. If you don't solve that root issue, you're always going to end up hurting people. Hurting others could be verbal, could be physical, you could get stuck in a cycle of breakups and makeups, or leading your partner to a place they're not ready for or something that they don't want because it makes you feel better. It's a difficult place to be and even more difficult to get out of. But understanding that hurt people hurt people will help you develop a perspective to deal with what your situation is and deal with those problems that are presented to you. You're able to understand and empathize more with that other person. Number four, people will often say, I can't believe so-and-so is treating me this way or I never get the respect that I deserve, or I can't believe that this is happening to me. And in other situations, people get bullied, treated negatively, or coerced into doing things they don't wanna do. It is critically important to know and understand that you determine people's reality of you. It's your job to set the terms for all of your relationships. What you allow is what you will receive, and what you allow people to think of you will be their reality of you. You have to set boundaries with your friends, family, coworkers, and relationships. Otherwise, they're gonna push you to these boundaries, they're gonna cross these lines, and you're gonna resent them for it. But you've allowed them to think and act this way towards you. And now it's not their fault that they mistreat you, they're just acting in accordance with what you made them believe they could do. Ultimately, you must take responsibility for how others treat you. Number five, sometimes you gotta fight. Fight for yourself and fight for the life you wanna create. This one was new for me and I was never really comfortable doing it based on how I saw myself and what I thought acceptable communication and behavior was, but now it's the only thing I wanna do. And sometimes it's the only thing you can do. Similar to the last point, people are gonna walk all over you. You cannot let this happen. They're gonna try to take advantage of your kindness. They're gonna take and take and never give. They're gonna completely drain you of your time and energy. You have to stand up to them, let them know you won't back down and fight for what you want and deserve. No one else is going to fight for you, they have their own shit to deal with. It's on you to bring about the change you want to see. And speaking of change, you have to fight to create the ideal life that you want. Again, no one cares if you're successful or not, they only care about themselves. If you want something to happen, fight for it. Or don't, and be okay with the fact that 100,000 other people are fighting for what they want, so don't complain when you're unsatisfied with how your life is going. If you don't fight for something better, you don't deserve something better. That was a little dark, not gonna lie. <laughs> Number six, I am actually a professional at doing the exact opposite of this one. Do as much upfront work as possible because deadlines come fast. This one is especially important for those who are entrepreneurs, self-employed, or pursuing multiple careers. Oftentimes you don't realize how much there is to do because one task becomes a multi-step, multi-task problem or issue or task. <laughs> And sometimes these tasks will rely on other people's timelines and can get stretched out over the week. A to-do list is ever-expanding and takes exponentially longer to complete the task than it is to acquire them. So when I was working on my project and it was halted, you know, less than two weeks in because of the thing, there was a lot of work that I could do on my own, separate from that company. However, you know, I was relying on them for a, a large portion, but there was a lot of stuff that I had to do as well. And when it halted, I was just like, you know what, I'll do the brunt work later. I guess I was overwhelmed, I didn't really know what to do. I wasn't sure what decision I was gonna make with the company, so I, I kinda just stopped what I was doing. I don't know how I convinced myself that I had the luxury of time to just sit around. And by the time the launch date came, I had a mountain pile of work to do. I looked back at the time where I did nothing and I just sat on my ass and I thought to myself, I could have done all of this work, I could have completed all of these different tasks in that time. Why didn't I do that? This massive workload that I had to do in such a short period of time caused me to cut corners and I had to spend more money hiring people to help me, all when I could have just done the work myself. It was just a really big waste of time. Don't think that you're gonna have the time later because shit happens, life happens. 
one thing turns into 12 things. You can never guarantee that you're gonna have the time later. Number seven, are you ready for this heavy hitter? Okay, seriously, this one hits deep. Listen to the things you tell yourself over and over again, but never take action on. This is the one that I find the most interesting because I never realized that I was trying to tell myself messages or warnings. I would say to myself, you know, I should get a new computer so I can edit faster. I would say that probably 10 times a day. And I would think about how much it would improve my workflow, how much it would cost, how much better my life would be if I had bought it, but I never took the time to actually decide, am I going to buy this or not? And the amount of time I've wasted and the stress that I've put myself through because my old computer can't keep up and it crashes all the time, I just sat there and said, oh well, I'll decide later. All of that would have outweighed the price of a new computer. And if we were to apply this to relationships, it'd be take note of the red flags. What are some of the thoughts where you say to yourself, hmm, I've noticed that I don't really like this thing that my partner does, or oh, I, don't, I noticed that I don't really like where this is headed. It's really hard to pick up on these things, especially when the relationship is packaged so nicely with the bow on top and you have all these other good feelings associated with that person. But I promise you, those thoughts and feelings that you're having will manifest themselves in some shape or form at some point down the road. Your unconscious mind and body are smart. They're trying to tell you things that your conscious mind can't see. And from there, you can decide what you'll do with this information. Hopefully make better decisions or even making any decision at all. You are trying to tell yourself something. Listen. If any of these resonated with you guys, let me, know now, blah, 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 let me know in the comments down below. What are some of the things that you learned in the first three months of 2021? Make sure to check out some of my other videos on fitness, lifestyle, and personal development. And if you're looking for a trainer or a workout program with a supportive community, check out, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> check out Empower Up. It's my Patreon where I provide 15 minute, no equipment, hit workouts, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I take everything I've learned about fitness and I put them into these workouts. It's definitely a great place if you're just starting your fitness journey or if you're just looking for a really great workout. I really hope that I'm able to provide you guys with any bit of value, whether it's the lessons or in power up. I just want you guys to be able to benefit from my life experience. Like, share, and subscribe so we can do a part two. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.